Hi, I'm Vipassana Vijayarangan and I'm a data scientist with the World Resources Institute in Washington, DC. Today, my colleagues Segundo Lopez and I will be talking about how we use data analysis to achieve road safety outcomes. Before we go into how we use this data analysis, I would like to talk about why we use data analysis for road safety. One of the most important reasons is that data analysis helps us select and prioritize interventions. Cities often have limited budgets allocated towards road safety targets, and it's important to be able to optimally prioritize the budget towards improving conditions for the most vulnerable road users. Um, another reason is monitoring analysis and evaluation of existing interventions. Um, you know, say if a lane is narrowed or speed is reduced in certain corridors, it is important to be able to measure how effective that intervention was at saving lives and protecting um, vulnerable users from injuries. A third reason is to assess risk and uh, various potential solutions. There are three data sources that we primarily use. Uh, one of them and uh, one of the most important is traffic crash data. Um, when using traffic crash data, it is really important that there are certain features that this data has. So on the map here, you see data of scooter uh, crashes in Austin in Texas. This data is geolocated. Um, this is because if you have data that is aggregated up to a neighborhood level or a district level, then it's very hard to have targeted interventions. Crash severity is also very important. Um, the data on severity uh, in this particular case was obtained from hospital records, so we know how severely the victims were injured. Um, we also know um, what type of crash it was on the basis of interviews with the victims, whether um, it was you know, a single vehicle, whether there were multiple road users involved and such. And so we also know the road user type. All of the victims in this particular case are um, uh, scooter users, but in certain cases there are additional uh, road users with whom there was a collision. Another important factor is uh, the time of the crash. Uh, we often see, you know, uh, crashes occurring and speeding occurring in different patterns across uh, the time of day. So this is also a very useful feature to have. Um, the second uh, data source that we often use is infrastructure data. This is because the infrastructure often determines how vehicles move, how pedestrians, bicyclists uh, use the road, and it either provides for or enables higher or lower speeds, or it provides safe movement for vulnerable users like pedestrians um, and children. Um, so some features that we often use in our work is uh, the length of the blocks and the number of lanes, as these are two factors that determine how likely, you know, vehicles are to be going at high speeds and such. Um, and data sources um, for infrastructure data um, are sometimes available within cities. Uh, in this particular case, uh, this is street data from Washington DC's open data portal, but there are also other open data sources like uh, OpenStreetMap um, that has um, street features. Um, and this can be um, processed through satellite imagery as well. One of the most important uh, data sets that we use is speed data uh, because speed is often one of the major factors for how severe uh, an injury is. Higher speeds lead to more severe injuries and a greater likelihood of uh, death. And so this is a data source that is um, really important. Um, in this particular map, you see data on speeds from um, ride hail vehicles in Bogota. This was obtained from a nonprofit group called Shared Streets. And the colors uh, signify whether the speeds are lower or higher. Um, there are also other uh, avenues through which one could get uh, speed data. Telecom companies where you use cell phone data to try to extrapolate the speeds of the vehicles as one option. Um, as in this particular example, um, app-based ride hailing companies have GPS data that they can share. Radar guns is a way to, you know, 
at a particular point of time. It requires uh, someone to be there monitoring the speed of vehicles and also speed cameras is another uh, possibility similar to radar guns. Um, and in some cases, cities such as Bogota have wireless sensors that are able to measure uh, the speed of vehicles as they uh, pass. So those are the, the reasons why uh, data analysis is useful for cities and the various data sets that we uh, use in our analysis. I'm now going to pass it to my colleague, Segundo Lopez, who will talk about how we do that data analysis. Okay, thank you, Vipasna. Um, I will be presenting the geographical analysis and some of its uh, methodologies and its applications. I am Segundo Lopez. I work as a, an international data coordinator for WRI, and I have been working with geographical data as well as big data for the last uh, seven years. Uh, as uh, Bipa mentioned, it's important to have into account the, like the type of data that we have. We will often have lines, it will be, for example, roads or edges of, uh, of a municipality or something similar. We will have points that can be, for example, represent the accidents or the crashes or maybe intersections. And we will often have polygons that, um, again, uh, a, a boundary of a, of a zone, of an area. And the combination of, the, of those, of those uh, three type of data will give us uh, the possibility of, anal of analysis that we will uh, be wanting to make. Uh, first, Besides that, you need to know who collects the data that you're using and how. It's very important, for instance, in crash data because it will be, it will be very different if the data you're using is collected by the police or by the health department uh, because uh, many reasons, the position, it depends on what is collected. And it's very important to take that into account. How was it you call it is also important. It's not the same if there is a person in the field with a, with a GPS collecting the, the coordinates, or if there is a, a, the person that collected the crash data only will include, for example, a reference of, or a, an address. It is gonna be very different, especially the precision on how it's collected. And this is very important for our analysis because if we don't have a high precision, we will not be able to make obviously a very precise analysis, but it, this is, but still is possible to do, but it's important to have make, take into account the percentage of geocorium possible geographical bias. For example, in Colombia, it happens that in low income areas, it's often very dangerous. And because of that, uh, it's less likely that uh, they will collect uh, crash data in those neighborhoods. So that's important to take into account when analyzing the, the data. Uh, the time and amount of observations regularly for geographical analysis or for any analysis, what is real recommended is for use at least three years and ideally five years of data. So that's important to take into account. It doesn't mean that if we don't have that amount of data, we will not be able to analyze anything. It's just what ideally is recommended. And there are some ways to uh, correcting that. And code of colors for results. So we, uh, this is very important. When, when we make the results, we need to take into account that we will be communicating something to someone. So it needs to have a clear message on, on, on the graph itself. It needs to be, uh, have the appropriate colors. For example, if it is something negative as crashes, it should have negative colors depending on your culture or, or anything. For example, in, in my country, in Colombia, where I, where I currently work, uh, red would be considered a negative color. So if this is a, a, a variety of reds. It's what I use often for identify, for example, hotspots or similar results. So uh, the ideally, what should we use when analyzing ge geographical data? I often use uh, the total amount of injuries. The reason is uh, because of the, that quote by Prieto Curiel. He, he did a, a doctoral thesis precisely on that, and he found that the series of fatal um, crashes are more concentrated than the rest. And as you can see in the graph, the, uh, the injuries are more concentrated than the fatalities. This is because the farther away from the gray line here in the middle, uh, it means the, the, the more concentrated in, in some places. So it means that fatal crashes, although they're, one would say that they're more important, but they're more randomly located. It doesn't matter if we don't have the, the data, if we only have fatalities, it's okay, but it's just what ideally we could use. 
there are at least two two methodologies. There are, I think, many more, but I, there are two that I often use and that are often recommended because they uh, like give good information about the problem. The first one is kernel density. It basically just produces like a like as you can see a cloud uh, that represents the, the density of um, the amount of uh, victims, for example, or crashes or or fatalities. It depends on the search radius. So, for example, in that map, in the map, in the in on top, I used a big radius, which means that it represents the density of, for example, at least two kilometers, for 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 instance. And in the map, uh, in the in the bottom, you can see that I used only like 500 meters. And then it gives you more granularity, more precision on the amount of victims per intersection, for instance. So it depends also on the type of analysis that you will be doing. This is a very easy uh, tool to use. You can uh, use it on, on any GIS software, but this one I use it in ArcGIS. This tool, for instance, it, it will be very helpful for uh, road safety audits. If you make, for example, an analysis in a corridor that you're making a road safety audit, uh, you can tell exactly which intersections has the highest amount of victims. If you divide it by type of mode, as we did in this example, you see that there are some intersections that are different and some, some have a higher concentration of maybe cyclists or pedestrians and some other of motorcyclists. And it will help you both, help you, helping you with the audit itself, but also to uh, help you focus on each intersection or help you focus in a specific problem of an intersection. In this case, we can clearly see which intersection has the highest amount of victims. And you can see that that's for uh, everybody. So um, that was very helpful in, in our case. It will also help you with the specific problems. In this case, we were um, analyzing a BRT in Bogota. This is the place where the highest amount of, uh, where it has the highest amount of victims in, in the whole network of BRT. And initially they thought, or what they were telling us, that they thought that it was people trying to enter in the stations without paying. But because of these maps, you could see that it was actually related with intersections and mid-block crossings, not for the stations. So, and also that they were not just one hotspot, but rather the whole corridor. So it requires some interventions at like a corridor level, such as a speed management. It's very helpful for just showing the, the issue. And in here it was, uh, we could show that, that not everybody was just entering illegally. You could use it for analysis of groups. Maybe if you just, for example, this is the difference between the concentration of female victims and male victims. You can see, for example, in this case that male victims are mostly concentrated in arterial roads, while uh, women, female victims are concentrated in, in local roads. So it can help you um, identify for, for a certain focus that you can take. Uh, in this case, for example, low speed zones should have a gender focus because it's where mostly women are being are, are being um, victims of traffic crashes. Uh, another tool that I wanted to show at our hotspot analysis, it basically, the difference is that this one creates a hotspot based on the statistical significance of this hotspot. What this means is that it captures um, these places where concentrations are higher, but not for a random variation, but rather because it's uh, there is a, an actual pattern. So this is, uh, that's the difference with kernel because kernel does not have the statistical significance, which implies that some of those hotspots identified with the kernel can be the result of a random variation, while in this case it corrects that issue. Yeah, basically, this is an example of, uh, of Bogota. It's important to divide, I think, by type of road because it doesn't identify which one. It, it depends on the neighborhoods. So it changes a lot if you have, for example, victims both in the neighborhood and in an arterial road. So I would uh, recommend using um, dividing arterial and local roads, for instance. This depends mostly not uh, also in the use, but also in the, in the possible um, countermeasures that you can use, for example, police control or police enforcement or it would be applied in an arterial road rather than a low speed zone that would be applied in a neighborhood. That's why it's important to divide it. And uh, again, it's very, I think it's a very simple tool that can be used also in, in most GIS software. I think I did, I did this one in ArcGIS. This is an example. So uh, we can see here the arterial corridors and its hotspots. We see that, for instance, that uh, Bogota's downtown, it has both a hotspot for fatalities and injuries and this is very interesting because as i told you we often use injuries but if you only have fatalities that is often the case uh, you can do it with just fatalities and since 
this is going to give you statistically significant hotspots. The lack of data is not going to be an issue. It's actually, it's actually correct. Uh, and we can see that in, we can concentrate in downtown. And here with Kernel, we can see exactly which intersections, the pattern of how they're distributed. You can see that it's not just one intersection clearly, but rather corridor level issues, because this is a place that is very dense. Bogota is as dense as uh, Mumbai in terms of uh, population, population density. So, for example, here there is a very high uh, density of, of pedestrians in, the, in downtown, and that's why it's like a corridor level thing. Uh, another example for local corridors, you can see that uh, then it's, uh, this is in the outskirts and low-income areas. And we have both hotspots for fatalities and killed and seriously injured that, uh, that that's KSI stands for. And you can see that at um, neighborhood level where it's happening and also at the intersection level what's going on. So that's a way of uh, analyzing patterns in a, in a city. There are many other ways that you can do it, obviously, but this one is recommended because it has both the precision of Carrel but also statistic, uh, uh, statistical significance analysis. Uh, this is an example I did for, um, we did for Colombia. You see, uh, Colombia is probably as big as Maharashtra, or maybe not, not as many population, as much as population. We have only 50 million people, but uh, it's uh, like a, an analysis that it can be done at a state level or maybe at a higher, a higher level. We did hotspots for the whole uh, country and we are, uh, it creates uh, a polygon where you can count the amount of victims inside and it gives you the places where you have the highest amount of victims in the whole country. Uh, and you can easily access it in that link that will be in the description of, of, this, of this video. And you can, everybody can access it. It's, very, it's like a very simplifying tool for, for using in, in uh, maybe for showing it to the decision maker or anyone involved. We're using this for, for a plan for uh, improving motorcycle road safety in Colombia. This is another example from Buenos Aires. Uh, Argentina. Uh, we use both uh, hotspot and kernel to identify the places where we should collect the data for um, the speed data for speed management. So we are focusing on the places with highest amount of victims and we want to check which one of those ha have a high amount of uh, speeds and therefore would have higher potential of improvement. Uh, th again, uh, the, the results are in that map that will, will also be in the description. One of the conclusions then, uh, it's gonna be, it's better to use the total amount of injuries or killed and seriously injured, but don't worry that both fatalities and injuries are, uh, uh, are very concentrated in some locations. So that it is why, this is why it's important to use data. Uh, kernel and cluster, the two, the two tools that I showed should, be, should complement each other. One, uh, each have, uh, has um, some benefits. Cluster can help you with uh, regular data sets, maybe if you only have some years, uh, two years or one year. And kernel can, can be more precise. It tells you exactly uh, the locations, uh, but it depends on, on how you use uh, the tool. Other data sets can be used with these with this data sets. That's an example of the amount of uh, victims, um, the women victims in local roads. And the income, you can see that basically the, the, the darkest is the higher income. So you can see that most of these hotspots are located in low-income areas. And that's good, that could help you inform the decision where to start. Uh, the code of colors is very important. As I told you, we're communicating data. That's uh, very important to take into account. It should not have many information. Should be as easy as we can present it. Because often, as engineers tend to make it complicated because... Uh, we did it and we are very contextualized with the, with, the, with the data, but it's important to that this message would arrive to anyone, even if they don't have a data background. Uh, also, based on what I told you, I think we can use in at least five stages or any political or any decision, uh, the data. So first, we can use it for diagnostics. Obviously, we will be able to tell uh, what's going on with our city, with our state, with our country. It, it, it's very helpful for, for targeting uh, those uh, measures to whatever our problem is. Thus, it's going to help, help us to prioritize and use optimally, uh, optimally uh, our money. And maybe not money, not just money, but rather all resources, human resources, the time, and uh, being able to like, you, uh, have better results uh, in a faster way if we use data. Uh, local case studies, this is also helpful because we often tend to 
think that if something used in you it's useful in Europe or in any other place is not going to be helpful in our countries. So it's important to create local case studies of success with data, so we can see that the measures also help or don't help in our in our country. So it's important to to test them with data. Uh, research, this is very important as well. Uh, for example, in Bogota, we did a research on the effect of the speed management in, in, in the arterial roads. And it was very important for us to identify what was successful, what wasn't, uh, to help create knowledge uh, to other countries. So this is also very important. And uh, last but not least, it helps against the mythology of road safety, as I tell you. Uh, there is often very, uh, many myths around it. And with data, we can. Uh, try to counteract those myths. For example, people think that if you lower the speed limit or if you do speed management, you're gonna necessarily affect congestion, which is not true, but based on the theory of, of traffic engineering. But it's important to show this in, in our local context, so it's easier to make these measures that are often uh, around myths, but also to, to, to uh, measure the, the potential impact, for instance, in, in local context. Uh, that was all I had to say. Thank you very much for uh, watching this, this video. I really hope it was helpful. If, um, feel free to contact me or, or B Pasna uh, if you have any question or want further analysis on something. I hope um, you have a, it was, this was uh, helpful and talk to you later.